And welcome everybody to Strings, Lists, and Dictionaries. In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert from a .csv file to a dictionary. And in the process, learn about how strings work, how to split strings into lists, and how we can take lists and use those indices to create dictionary key and value pairs. So this is a bit more of an academic type thing. This is, it's, it, I think it's important, and it's based on a lesson I did with my students today. So let's get started. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to say a quick shout out to my members. Thanks to the Paddles, the Snakes, and the Invaders. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to support the channel directly, click the uh, join button down below. Here we are. Strings, lists, and dictionary. Let me go ahead and make that a little bit bigger, see if that's going to work. And what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be taking a CSV file, I'm going to be loading it into a string variable, I'm going to separate that string variable into a list, and then I'm going to take that list information and I'm going to make it into a dictionary. Now, before somebody comments down below, yes, I know there are modules that will do this. Uh, we'll just automate some of this for you. What I want to do with this particular lesson is, again, it's something that I taught my students today, is I want them to understand how all of these things are, are formed, how they work differently, and how we can convert from one to another. I think it's a valuable exercise. So let's get started. Now, the first thing we're going to need is a CSV file. Now, a CSV file is what's known as a comma-separated values file. So I've already gone ahead and added some information here. Now I'm using LibreOffice Calc. You can use whatever, but this should work uh, as I expected. So hopefully this will, will go forward. Now I could have just made this file in my text editor, Genie, but I decided to try this instead. So you can see here I've got my first column, and these are names. So I got Bob, Grant, and Greg, who are the three members of the legendary punk band Husker Du. And in the second column, I have their year of birth, 1960, 1961, and 1959. And in the last column, I have their role in the band. So Bob Mould is the vocalist and guitarist. Uh, Grant Hart, uh, who sadly passed away a few years ago, is also a vocalist and drummer, which is kind of unusual. And then Greg Norton is the bass player. So again, I want to save this as a .csv file. So watch what I do here. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Save As. And I need to save it into a particular folder. And so I made a folder on my desktop called Strings, Lists, and Dictionaries. So I'm going to just call this data.csv. It doesn't really matter what I call it. I got to know the name, but uh, the .csv part is important. So I'm going to click Save. And when you do this, it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to do that? And be, because the default format is called a ODF, open document format. So I'm going to go ahead and click use text CSV. And you're going to get some more options here. I think the key one here is to del delete this string delimiter. We want the fill delimiter to be a comma. Because we could use other things, there's tabs, there's yeah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But we want to use commas here for this particular example. Now I know that the data does not contain any commas, so we should be fine. So I'm going to click OK. So now that file should have been saved. So I'm going to go ahead and close that, and hopefully I won't need that again. And if I go into that folder, uh, let's see, it's on my desktop and strings listen dictionaries, you should see data.csv, and then this is the file here, the Python file I am working on. So yeah, so let's get started. So the first thing I need to do is I need to load the file into a string. Now again, I know that there are libraries to do some of these things. Uh, this is a step-by-step -step kind of from the bottom up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the following code, and I got this actually off of Stack Overflow, I believe. Uh, so open and it is data.csv. Again, that is the file name. And I am reading the file. I'm not writing to the file, I'm reading. So that's why I put R. And I'm gonna put this as uh, my file. And I'm gonna change the font size a little bit because the underscores are not appearing. So my underscore file. And we're gonna put a colon here. And I th I'm gonna put here data because I'm reading data in and it's going to be my file dot read. Now there are other ways to do this. I can read it in, you know, line by line, but I'm doing it this way because it's a short file and it's a little bit easier I think to understand. 
So just I'm going to test it and see what's happening in my program. So I'm just going to go ahead and print out data. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to run that. And again, I'm in Genie here. And Genie is cross-platform. Check it out. And you'll see down below, it printed out exactly what was in my CSV file. So that's pretty cool. Um, so the CSV format, as you can see, is it's going to be text, comma, text, comma, text. And then we have a new line character at the end here, and we'll go down. So you can see, I'm going to try this here, print type data. So if I run that again, you can see that this is a string. Okay, so I've just loaded the data into a string. Now, I'm going to get rid of that. I don't need that anymore. What I want to do, so I'll go ahead and comment that. So load uh, data into string variable. So the next step is I want to create a list uh, of each row. And this is very, very easy in Python. So watch what I do here. So I'm going to be rows equals data. So this is the name of my string variable. And dot split quote. And the split is used to separate strings. And this is called a delimiter, or delimiter, depending on how you want to say it. And in this case, it is going to be forward slash N. At least I think it is. Some systems it could be forward slash R, but I'm pretty sure forward slash N is what we need here. And to test it, I'm just going to go ahead and type print rows. So I'm going to hit F5. And you can see here now my output. I've got a list. You can tell by the brackets here. I've got a string, first string, which is index zero. It's Bob, 1960, vocals and guitar. Then I've got Grant, et cetera, et cetera, and Greg. And you also notice I've got this empty one here at the end. And we're going to have to deal with that later. Okay, But for now, we'll leave it the way it is. So I'm going to say print type rows. And I'm just doing this to show you that the type that we've got. You can see that that is a list. So we have converted okay, So our code here. And I'm trying out some fancy new stuff here. So you can see our code. We take this data file here. And then we split it using the split method and into this other variable. I don't know if this is helping or hurting. And then, then we've got our data in rows, as you can see down here. Um, this is just something, today's like the first day I'm actually trying this, and I feel like John Madden, if you know who that is. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And so now we have our data in rows. Now notice each row is now a string. Okay, So that tells us something. So what I want to do is I want to separate this information into three parts. So name, birth year, and I'll just say roll, so roll in the band. So now I'm going to iterate through each row. So for row in rows, I'm just going to go ahead and print row here real quick. If you're not familiar with this stuff, this is something I'm doing a lot with my students, so they would know what this is. But just in case, so you can see each row is printed out separately. Now what I want to do again is I want to separate each of these into their own data point. Now the way I'm going to do this is split again. So I'm just basically going to repeat what I did here. But it's going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to say, I'm going to put a little comment here, split, split the row into uh, Let's call it info and make it clarify a little bit. So we'll say the info equals row. Notice it's row, not rows, because I'm doing each row individually. Dot split. And in this case, the delimiter is the comma. Because the data has commas. It's comma separated values. So again, just to show you what's going on, I'm going to go ahead and print info. And actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do, do it one time. I'll go type info, comma info. So let's go ahead and run that. And you can see I've got a list 
and here's the list. So notice Bob, Grant, and Greg are all in position zero, or index zero, I should say. These are all in one. But also notice that these are strings. These are not integers. You know, to the human eye, they look like integers. To the computer eye, they are strings. And we'll deal with that in a little bit as well. And we've got vocals and guitar, vocals and drums in position of index two. Alrighty, so we are making progress. I'm pretty happy with this so far. Now, this is one of those things where I talk to my students, you know, I'm just gonna say I'm gonna separate out the data. I'm not sure how, how else to put that. Um, but we've got three pieces of data. We've got the name, we've got the birth year, I think that's one word, and we've also got the role in the band. And again, if you look, this is index zero, this is index one, and this is index two. It's gonna be pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna go info zero, I'm go info one, and info two. Now just for, you know, kind of completeness here, note that this is a string, but I want it to be an integer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and convert that right now. So I'm gonna go ahead now and print out the information. I'm gonna use an F string. I'm gonna say name, uh, name. And I really strongly recommend that you use consistent uh, names for your variables. It will save you lots and lots of struggle later. And roll, and... And again, if you're on an older version of Python, you might not have F strings, you can just print this out the normal way. So now I'm going to go ahead and run this, and there's going to be an error, and I'll explain why in a minute. Oops, I'm going to go ahead and try and run this. There we go. Okay. So notice it started printing out. Okay, so I got Bob, 1960, vocal and guitar, uh, Grant, 61, vocals and drums, and Greg, 1959, bass. And then I get an error. So if you recall, the CSV file, when we split it, it gave us that extra little, uh, okay, it gave us that extra little, you know, that row at the end. And it was empty. But even though it's empty, we still have to deal with it. Now, one of my students suggested that we just delete that, that row. And that's not a bad idea. We could have done that. Um, we could have done, we could do, I think we could have just done rows Basically, we could have just done rows equals rows uh, like that. And what would it be? I think just, yeah, uh, yeah, like, 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 it'd be like zero length rows minus one. There's probably a shorter way to do that, but we could do that. We could, we could cut out the information that we don't want. Um, however, you know, it is possible that we would get data that has maybe the first row is also blank or a row in the middle is blank. So another way to do this is to look at this data and notice when we split the row, it's got three pieces of information. So I'm going to use that to check. So I'm just going to say check if the row is the proper length. Now, if it's in the wrong order, we're out of luck, but um, that's what we're going to use. So I'm going to put that up here. So I'm going to say if the length, oops, I'm put that back in. So if the length of info, we should have three items for this particular data. If it has three pieces of uh, three pieces of information, that will help us avoid that error. Now again, I know there are other ways to do this. This is what is uh, appropriate to the level of my students right now. So this is why I'm doing it this way. So let me go ahead and run that. And you can see now no error and it just ignored that information because it didn't have three pieces of information, which is pretty cool. Okay, so we're making really good progress. Um, you know, at this point, we guess we could stop, but what I wanna do is I wanna go one more, one more step and I wanna put all this into a dictionary, okay? So, and this is one of those things where, again, especially for beginners, you gotta think about where things need to be done in a program. And especially when you're iterating, you know, make sure things go where they need to go. 
sorry, I'm drinking a little tea here. Um, the air is very dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a dictionary. And what can I call this? I guess I can call this uh, members. Members, because band members. I guess that's how I want to just call it Husker Do. What the heck? Um, Husker Do <laughs> equals. And uh, now again, you would probably make this a little bit more generic in another program. But uh, again, these are the members of Husker Do, so I'll just go ahead and use that. So what I want to do is I want to use the name as the key. Again, I'm assuming you already know what dictionary is. Uh, if you don't watch my dictionary video, come back. Uh, so what you want to do is I want to use the name. Let's see, I can bring this back. I can use the name as my key. And notice I've got two pieces of information here. That doesn't help. I really got to work on this. Uh, I've got two pieces of information here that I could use as the values. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just one piece of information, and then I will do the other piece of information. I'll show you how that's going to work. So I'm going to kind of build this up piece by piece uh, just to make it hopefully comprehensible. So what I'm going to do here is instead of printing, so I'm just going to comment that out. I'm going to put populate the dictionary. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say my dictionary is Husker Du. The key is the name of the band member. And the value is going to be the birth year. And then what I'll do is once this dictionary or once the dictionary is populated, once the all the rows have been read, I'm going to go ahead and print the dictionary. So let's try that. All right, there we go. So you see now, my key is Bob, and the birth year is 1960. Grant, 1961. Greg, in 1959. Okay. Now, however, you probably see, well, OK, the, the role info uh, is gone. OK, we've lost that. Now, what we could do is we could make a list, you know, Husker do birth year, and, or make a, a dictionary, Husker do birth year, make a, another dictionary, Husker do roles, okay? Um, or maybe I should just—I probably should just make this band, but that's okay. Um, you get the idea. So here's where it gets a little tricky, especially for beginners. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually put a dictionary inside of the dictionary. Okay, let me let me repeat that. We're going to put a dictionary inside of a dictionary. Okay. And in the second dictionary, the key is going to be birth year. And the other key is going to be role. Okay, so watch what I do here. So again, the outer dictionary, the main dictionary, Husker Du, the key is the name. I'm going to make another dictionary. The first key is birth year. I'm just going to put birth year. The second key is going to be role. And I'm going to put role here. And so if I run this, you can see now I've got Bob, and I got his birth year is 1960. His role is vocals and guitar. I've got Grant, okay, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to keep repeating myself. You're probably getting tired of hearing it. But you notice there is a dictionary inside of the dictionary. So what I could do here is I could say for name in Husker Du. Because the name is the key. I could have just put key here if you want, I wanted to. Or for name in Husker Du. I'll just use name. Print name. Sorry, no. Print Husker Du. Do. Name. And again, I could use single quotes here. I think it's actually the preferred way of doing it. I just, I've just never gotten used to it. And I apologize to everybody who hates that. Um, so I'm going to run it. Key error name. That was not very bright. Um, okay, so I should use the variable, duh. Okay, so you can see now, actually what I should have done is I should put name, comma. Let's go ahead and do that. So you can see now I got Bob, and then that's a dictionary now. So this is one dictionary, but I still want to get birth year and role out of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the following. I'm going to put uh, birth year. 
and comma. I'm just going to copy that because I'm kind of lazy. And this is going to be a uh, roll. Let's go ahead and try that. Okay, so you can see now I've got a dictionary and I pulled out. Okay, the name is the key for Husker Du, the dictionary Husker Du. Then the secondary dictionary that's inside of that has this as one piece of data. And that The key to that is birth year. And the key to this is the roll. So, yeah, and I could I could add more dictionaries if I wanted to. It gets a little complicated at that point, but um, you know, a two-level dictionary isn't too too difficult, I think, to, to comprehend. Um, but basically, you know, like I said, this is the key, this is the dictionary, um, this is the key. So it's the dictionary, the first key. So in this case, that would be Bob, uh, Greg, uh, Grant, and Greg. The second key is birth year, and then the same thing over here. So that is pretty much that. That's basically what this whole video was about. Um, so again, I read all of the CSV data into this file, uh, and actually into this string. Then I split it into rows using the new line character. Um, I created a dictionary. Then I iterated through each row. And then I split the information in the row into you know where there's a comma, I use the comma as the delimiter. And then I just want to make sure the row is the proper length. If so, I'm assuming I've got a name, birth year, and role in that order. And then again, notice how I'm using very clear variable names. Now, if you're a really good programmer, you're doing this a long time, I could just take this out and put this here. Okay, and then I could take this out and put this here. And I could take this out and put this here. And I could just I could just delete this out. Okay. And then this will do the same thing. But let me ask you this. What's more readable? Now, right now, because I'm doing the program, I completely understand what's going on. Um, but if I come back to this a year from now or probably even a week from now, I'll be like, I don't know what's going on. Um, so I find it really, really helpful to separate things out in a step-by-step -step fashion. It takes a little more memory. Uh, probably takes a little more time processing wise, but I think in terms of code readability and updatability, I think you'll benefit. Um, and then I just iterated through the keys, printed the key, um, the key and birth year combination, and the key and role combination. And that, uh, my friends, is that. So thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, again, thanks to my members. Thanks to everybody who has subscribed. Thanks to everybody who's joined and commented, especially those thumbs up. So click down below. And as I like to say, keep on coding. Take care.